Good morning, everybody. So, um, what a great event. Thanks, Meg, and everyone else who um, organised the event and everyone here today to bring your own energies and knowledge and skill. So, we can all share. Could you speak more into the mic or speak up? I can, thank you. <laughs> uh, first of all, I would like to. Sorry. Uh, I would like to um, acknowledge that this gathering is being held on traditional lands of the Ngunnawal, Ninjabal and um, Kudjara peoples of the Bunjilung Nation. I'd like to pay elders, uh, our respects to elders past and present, acknowledge the wealth and experience and knowledge from Aboriginal people and our non-Aboriginal brothers and sisters at this conference today and tomorrow. I'll hand you over back. Welcome everyone, my name is Rebecca Bloor. I'm a proud Anawan woman from Yurala, New South Wales. I've been working with Brighty Futures as a family development worker for just over two years now. I'm also the Aboriginal representative on the board of our local Evans Head Woodburn Community Preschool. I've also been involved in steering committees for local Aboriginal programs involved in strengthening community and connection to culture. In 2008, I completed a Bachelor of Psychology with Honours degree, and my passion lies in supporting Aboriginal families and their children toward healing from the impacts of intergenerational trauma and educating our communities around child wellbeing and safety. Next one. So as previously mentioned, um, I completed a Bachelor of Psychology with Honours. I did this at the uh, University of New England located in Armidale, New South Wales. Um, it's a four year degree and the first three years of this degree comprised of the units that are mentioned there, um, among others including sociology and philosophy. And as you can see, the information I obtained from this degree has been a great foundation and extremely valuable and can be applied to many aspects of my role as Brighter Futures Family Development Worker. The fourth and final year, the fourth and final year of my degree consisted of honours coursework and um, my head dissertation. The coursework consisted of two reading courses. The first was addictive behaviour uh, and the second was health psychology. I also covered three other units which were professional ethics and roles, seminars on history and theory, and advanced statistics. Um, my uh, dissertation component compri comprised of conducting an empirical research project and compiling a 10,000 word thesis. My thesis title was the development and validation of composite codependency scale. My research study assessed the structure, consistency and validity of a new instrument which was a 19 item measure questionnaire designed to assess an individual's identification with codependent traits. My research project was actually inspired by my sister, who at the time I was undertaking my degree was an active member of the 12 step codependence anonymous group meeting in Armada, New South Wales. <laughs> These meetings appeared to be associated with positive outcomes regarding my sister's overall wellbeing and health. And uh, the codependency model continues to be one of the most commonly used theoretical frameworks adopted by mental health professionals to deal with families experiencing alcohol and other drug use problems. According to the codependency model, members of a family in which one member has an alcohol or drug use problem may exhibit the signs or symptoms of codependency, which is uh, a pathologically dependent and overzealous helping behaviours that inadvertently encourage and or enable maintenance of the addiction and hence delay recovery. The model further contends that improved family functioning requires not only the resolution of alcohol or other drug problems, but also the treatment of the members of family members' codependency. The codependency model remains widely used by family counselling agencies in the addictions field and is also becoming more common in other areas of the health and welfare arena. It also continues to be a prominent concept in the personal growth industry, but currently there is a limited uh, support for the codependency model and the lack of an accepted formal definition for the proposed syndrome. So 
The composite codependency scale that I developed provides a valuable tool for researchers who wish to further explore the codependency construct and future research studies using this will help resolve the controversies surrounding the codependency model and advance its understanding. So that's enough about me and I'll now hand over to Michelle to introduce herself. Back to me, uh, already been introduced, Michelle Laurie, um, frontline woman. My father's a Yagle man from Yamba, and my mother's uh, Gomangir from South Grafton, Ferguson. Um, very, very, very proud of my mob and what they've achieved um, and the work that they do with our young ones down there, especially in the Yagle area. Um, I've been working in Aboriginal communities for over 17 years now in different sectors, coming from nursing and education, and now into the community services, very new to community services. Uh, my role as a uh, family development worker allows me, as we do as Aboriginal people, give back to our mob, um, help in any way that we can, you know, navigate through through difficulties and support and let, let our families lead their change and support that. Connecting our young people is priority for me back to country, back to culture, uh, back to family, you know, uh, I think there's a real imbalance there and I'd like to work with our young ones to find that balance, whatever that means for them in their circumstances. Currently undertaking a cert for, as Beck mentioned, in Family Family Health with ECAF, and that articulates through to the events diploma in Parramatta in the um, Aboriginal Trauma Specialist Counselling. That's where, that's why I think the sweet spot is for for some change, basically. So I want to be a part of that journey to make those big changes for the community. Uh, the way the, the course is delivered at the moment, it's six one-week blocks. We're on our second last block this week. Um, as you can see, the units are there that we've already covered. So we're doing adult sexual assault this week. Uh, and my group will be here tomorrow to, um, to hear all the great guest speakers regarding the healing journeys and stuff like that, which links to the stuff that we're, le we're learning. You know, that's the undercurrent of everything, really. Program um, design is really, really designed for Aboriginal learning. You know, we do a lot of our assessments, learning in classes, groups, support each other. We take home very minimal work at home to do, but whatever, whatever we do, I find it's validating my work as a family development worker. Um, so as I said, yeah, the pathway, that's where my pathway, that's where I want to be, that's where my heart is for my mob. Um, very passionate around our young ones, as I've got four children of my own, you know, and it's an important role to be a parent, it's an important role to be a part of the community, and I'm really honoured to be welcomed in people's homes, you know, at their times of most difficult difficulties and helping them navigate through that and empowering them to make the change themselves. Brighter Futures, the program that Beck and I work um, with, is um, a voluntary targeted early intervention and intensive case management program. Um, it's funded by Family Community Services and it's delivered by 21 lead agencies across New South Wales. I'll let Beck take over and let, um, let you know a little bit more about our leading agency. Thank you. <coughs> Okay, so we're up to about the consortium of neighbourhood centres far north coast Kong. Um, the consortium was formed in 2004 to create a regional alliance to strengthen the resource base of neighbourhood centres in the northern rivers and to provide a mechanism for neighbourhood centres to build and increase capacity in local communities by applying a regional approach to addressing mutual issues of concern. Um, our Brighter Futures offices sit within neighbourhood centres, so this provides um, easy access to wraparound services within the centre and also allows for a, um, a collaborative holistic service provision within the centre. Um, examples of the wraparound services are Centrelink Agency, Structured Playgroups, Toy Libraries, Emergency Relief Services, 
child and family support services, Aboriginal family workers, youth workers and food pantries. Uh, the, the consortium committee is inclusive of Aboriginal representation on its board of members allowing for provision of culturally appropriate, appropriate program design and services delivered to community. The delivery of, delivery of culturally sensitive appropriate programs increases the self-determination of our Aboriginal people and builds capacity and resilience within our Aboriginal communities. Uh, the consortium facilitates a variety of unique community-focused services and interactions within our communities such as Knowing Mob Program, Community Garden, social enterprises such as um, know, Johnny's Restaurant and Chill Cafe in Evans Head, uh, Crankfest uh, and structured playgroups which also include Aboriginal specific playgroups. Okay, so the consortium's members are, as you can see up there, um, the Mid Richmond Neighbourhood Centre, uh, the Kyogre Youth Action, the South Grafton New School of Arts and the Nimbin, Mullumbimby and Pottsville Neighbourhood Centres. Now the Mid Richmond Neighbourhood Centre Evans Head is the administrative agency for the Brighter Futures program Far North Coast um, and Brighter Futures staff sit at all these locations except for Kyogle and we have a shop front at Ballina in Tamar Street and Ganella Bar Rouse Road. Uh, 